Chapter 5. Healing sometimes means learning to live in peace with the pain. This chapter is for you if you are struggling to get over a difficult, painful loss and you think you should be able to get over it. Now, some losses we know are obvious that we may never, ever get over in that sense. We may learn how to live in peace with it, but we may not get over it. And that's what I wrote this short chapter for in my book, Choose Her Every Day or Leave Her, because so much of, I think, what negatively impacts us in relationships is actually our inability to live in peace with loss. Even getting into a relationship, there is often a grieving process that we must go through, and we don't think that we should. It's not a common understanding that getting into a relationship, there should be anything to grieve. We, this is what we wanted all this time, right? And yet, there's something that we must give up when we get into a relationship, like freedom, right? being able to do whatever I want to do, or independence, being independent in our hyper-independent culture, learning how to depend on another person often requires the willingness to accept the loss of our independence. So this is chapter five. Healing sometimes means learning to live in peace with the pain. It's not a long one, it's short. I'm discovering that sometimes healing just means learning to live in peace with the pain. I've been to countless personal growth workshops. I've questioned my stressful thoughts and limiting belief systems for days on end and accumulated countless hours of stranger eye-gazing to weepy Whitney Houston songs. That's actually a true story. Uh, it was a Whitney Houston song. I was at a workshop looking into the eyes of another man right at the beginning of this like nine-day workshop. And yeah, it was, it was fun. Uh, by the way, I'm reading all of the chapters of my book, Choose Her Every Day or Leave Her. Subscribe to this channel if that's something that might interest you. This is a book for men and for women. The subtitle is A Guide for Your Journey Through the Transformational Fires of Love and Intimacy. Okay, let's dive back in. I've sat still and starving on desolate mountainsides. Oh my goodness, Luke. I'm actually recording this while I'm doing a vision quest on a mountainside. Hmm. I've sat still and starving on desolate mountainsides while determined lies, to reframe disappointments and disillusionment as profound blessings. I've danced in authentic celebration on many a dark cloud's silver lining, recited endless forgiveness mantras, lovingly held my phantom inner child, and even walked quickly across 2,000 degree glowing hot coals while screaming, yes, 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 Tony Robbins, all to prove just how much in control of my thoughts and perceptions I am. I've done it all, most of it anyway. Yet despite all the inner work I've done and all the beautiful insights my mind and heart are fortunate to see, there are some sorrows from my past that just never seem to fully exhaust their sadness. Yes, certain ones do get easier to bear with time, and perhaps someday I'll be completely healed when I finally discover the right technique or some flash of divine insight startles me awake in bed. Or maybe I'll just eventually notice the wound no longer aches when life pokes its meddling, sharp-nailed fingers at it. For now, though, simply making peace with the pain seems to be the best healing I can hope for. It might even be the very salvation my sadness so deeply longs for. I finish with a quote from Alanis Morissette, one of her songs. called I think it's called Incomplete. Beautiful song. I have been running so sweaty my whole life, urgent for a finish line, and I have been missing the rapture this whole time of being forever incomplete. That's chapter five of Choose Her Every Day or Leave Her. Subscribe to this channel to come on this ride with me. There's a little over 60 chapters. And the next chapter is six reasons why men must give up pornography. That's a doozy. See you in the next video.